Hi, Singwei and Teresa. Um, yeah, so uh, for Singwei, uh, Mr. Fang Singwei is a deputy director from Singapore Children's Society, and SES have uh, developed a volunteer community plan, BCP, along with uh, EY, and uh, Singwei is here to share his experience today. So uh, Teresa, uh, along with her colleague, Jim, uh, they are our partners from Ernst & Young. They have journeyed with uh, our SSAs for a year to develop this uh, BCP guide. Uh, they've also worked with uh, many uh, SSAs over the years um, on volunteer management capability development projects. So I'm sure they'll be able to share some of the experience from their interaction with other SSAs also. Yeah, so uh, hi, Simi and Teresa. Uh, wonderful to have you guys on board with us today and I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts on this relatively new uh, idea of volunteer continuity planning. So um, to start off our conversation, uh, let me refer to the pre-survey results whereby 37% have a BCP, which does not involve volunteers. Um, so, and whereas some have actually involved volunteers already. So I wanted to uh, move on to some of the commonly asked questions to Teresa actually. So. Uh, do you mind sharing with us what's the difference between a BCP and a VCP? And are they complementary? Like, do you mind sharing more on this? Hi, Jingyi. Hi, hi everyone. Um, very happy to see everyone. Uh, yes, I think that's a very common question that we get asked. What's the difference between a business continuity plan, a BCP, with a volunteer continuity plan? Um, so I think for business continuity plan, which many of you might be familiar with, it really spans across the entire organization. To really make sure that right, your, your business functions, uh, your services you provide, especially the critical services, uh, face minimum disruption and downtime during times when um, you know, a crisis hits. Right? Um, a, a volunteer continuity plan focuses specifically on volunteers right, to make sure that um, you know, volunteer partnership can continue during times of, of crisis. Um, and I, I'm happy to, quite, to note as well that many of you actually have volunteers called out as part of your, your BCP as well, your, your business continuity plan, right? So, um, you know, for many, uh, for I, I believe a quote about 25% uh, of the agencies, you already have volunteers already, you know, incorporated to a business continuity plan, uh, which is fantastic, right? Because volunteers are an integral part of the service that we deliver. And if volunteers are an integral part, then, you know, as when, when business gets disrupted, how you know, we ensure that volunteering continues uh, is very important as well. Um, I think when it comes to a volunteer continuity plan, it's important that it takes alignment to your business continuity plan. So if your business continuity plan doesn't, doesn't have that component of volunteers yet, having a volunteer continuity plan will make sure that you know, when, times are, when times of crisis, it, when, when volunteer supply is disrupted, um, that there is a, a, a managed way, a structured way of, of, of handling uh, this disruption such that volunteer partnership can still continue. Whether it's partnership within the programs or even the way in which you engage your volunteers might need to change uh, and evolve as well during um, the, the crisis. Also, it's, it's a really complementary to the business continuity plan. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Teresa, for that. Um, I actually want to move on to Singwei. Uh, can you uh, actually uh, share briefly about uh, what you do in SES and your role in developing a VCP for your organization? And, and also, uh, side on a tangential point, did SES have a VCP first, or do you mind sharing more about that? Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks for having me here. I'm Singwei, so I'm a Deputy Director in Children's Society, and I also uh, oversee our volunteer management team. Yeah, so uh, I think to Jing this question on uh, does SES has a, a BCP in the first place, I think uh, we have a BCP, we have a business continuity plan, but we don't really have one that uh, looks into volunteer continuity. I think uh, when COVID first, uh, first struck us in 2020, uh, very naturally our attention goes straight to our clients' well-being. We focus on them, we focus on the staff well-being next. And volunteers seems to be like at the we took a back seat. So, so what we did then that year is like we actually suspended our volunteers' activity for close to six months without doing anything, no plans in place. Yeah, so so once after things are more settled, that's when yeah, yeah, we still have a group of volunteers to, to engage, to reach out to. That's when we start to put some things together. So uh so towards the end of 2020, I think the opportunity came along where uh, we can actually work with EY on developing a BCP plan. That's when we, we put our hand up and we said that, yeah, so we, we, want, we, we need to do this, we want to do this. And, and we signed up for, for the work with EY. 
So it took about a year. Well, I think the, the plan actually, most of the plan came in place in the, in the first six months. Then the, the second six months of 2021 is mainly to fine tune, to, to, to put the plans in, in place. Yeah, but, but in total, it took about a year. And, and I wouldn't say that the plan is ready, ready now. I think it's still very much a work in progress uh, with the situation continuing uh, changing. Yeah. Mm, thanks, Yingwei. So, um, what was the um, how 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 did you develop the VCP um in that sense, like with your team? Because I hear what you're saying in terms of collaborating with EY, but how do you manage to do the VCP with uh, other SES colleagues? And how has it benefited the agency now that you have something in place? Yeah, I think uh for SES we are uh we are we are we are, we, are, we have twelve service centers spread across Singapore, and we run uh different uh services different programs. So we work with children, youth, family, and across uh, different spectrum. So I think uh and, and being being uh significantly quite a, quite a big uh, charity, uh I think it's hard to to really zoom in to every volunteer's role. Uh, at the start. So, so what we, our team uh, at, the, at, at the HQ level is that we have to prioritize saying that, okay, which role is the more critical one? Which are the one that has a significant impact on us should volunteering stop? So I think uh, we focus on uh, roles that, are, that probably engage a, a bigger group of volunteers. We focus on that. And at the same time, we are also uh, constantly thinking about new roles that comes along. So those roles that might not have exist uh, before COVID, but exist right now. So for example, uh, in our family service center, before COVID, our cl clients usually will come down to the center to, to collect their food ration. But now with the pandemic, we actually discourage them from coming down. So hence, we need people to go, go, go to, the, to, the, to deliver these items to, their, to, to, to them. So that's when this, this becomes the second group of uh, volunteers that we need to have some kind of plans on. Then followed by the third tier, which uh, probably lesser volunteers, the, the, the impact is not that great. So first, we prioritize. Then uh, I think as we, then we also engage the, 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 the teams on the ground. So some of them, uh, being a funded program, do also uh, receive advisory from the ministry. So with that in place, I think it also takes away part of our worry since, I mean, there are certain guidelines in place. So we really focus on those significant impact, yet not so much direction available uh, in, at first. Then I think engaging the ground, finding out their needs, and then putting your plans in place. I think, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's this communication uh, that the HQ team has with the, with the coordinators on the ground. Yeah, but I think it's priority and then communication and testing out the plan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Yingwei. So, so I really uh, hear that um, doing a volunteer continuity plan requires an uh, understanding of a lot of the different uh, programs and streams of work from different colleagues and getting their buy-in as well and um, balancing um, information that we have with information we have not as well as what will be most important for service users. So thank you for that. Um, I wanted to move uh, to another question for both uh, Teresa and Xinwei actually. So, um, of course, we, we, are, we are hearing, right, that um, during COVID, of course, with all of these disruptions, it's good to have a plan like a VCP to have better clarity about what to do. Um, but now that we're in endemic and we are in this um, COVID for two years, so would it still be useful for other organizations to start afresh with a VCP? And uh, when should an agency consider developing a VCP? Maybe I can uh, go to Teresa first. Actually, I think this is really the best time to, if you really don't have one in place, this is actually the best time to start one. Um, for, for a couple of reasons, right? So firstly, I think if you think back to two years ago when, when the pandemic first hit, I think most of us were scrambling, right? In order to, whether or not we forgot about volunteers, whether, you know, to put in place new arrangements. Um, and, and, you know, the whole point of the VCP is that we are prepared right, when that happens. So this will not be the last uh, crisis that we will go through. I mean, uh, just like when, I'm sure when, uh, when, when, when SARS hit a number of years ago, and then after that, um, you know, the, the, the next, uh, whether it's the haze or the next pandemic hit, there was always an initial scrambling that, that took place. Um, and very little remembering or remembrance of what happened in the past or how things were handled. Um, so actually, this is a great time to actually um, to, to reflect on, on that, that journey and start the documentation around and the preparation as well for the next round, right? Um, because now things are still fresh. Um, you know, we also can take it as a chance to review how has our crisis response been? Are there things that we could, we, we could have done better? 
Um, and so, you know, this is a great time to then document all of that and actually prepare uh, for the next, the next round that, that could happen, um, whether it be, you know, a, a, um, in a couple of years or even on an ongoing basis, right? Because, you know, the, the, there is a peak and trial to the cycle as well. Um, so, I, yeah, I would say that actually it's a great time to, if you haven't already started a BCP, um, to actually think about starting one. Okay, thanks, Theresa. Asimi, do you, do you, what's your perspective on that? Do you agree with Theresa? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I mean, uh, honestly, I also feel that now is a good time to, to start coming up with a plan if you have yet to do so. And I think uh, going through also the pandemic for the last two years, uh, some of the charities has also started doing a VCP. So, so there are a lot more people we can speak to to consult. Yeah, when in back, I mean, back to 2020, when it first happened, I was asking around if anybody has a VCP. I mean, not really a lot of uh, organization do have VCP then. So, so there's very little people that we can actually consult and work with. But I think uh, today we are definitely in a much uh, more resilient position. And there's a lot more uh, partners, friends that we can speak to to, to do this. Lah. So, yeah. Right. Thanks, Simi. Actually, it really reminds me of what uh, my experience was as a launch manager previously. I really wished that I had a network of other volunteer managers from different agencies to bounce off ideas from and also like things to refer to um, instead of just being um, stuck in limbo, <laughs> being unsure about what to do um, and then just scrambling. <laughs> yeah, so, so really appreciate that point. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, Simei as well, uh, how long do you take to complete the VCP and um, do you mind sharing about some of the challenges you had when you, um, when you were doing the VCP? I think uh uh I think we, we we as I mentioned earlier we took about six six months to to put something concrete in place and then another about another six months to fine tune to run through it, but yet even though after a year I wouldn't say that the plan is complete lah. So so I think it's, it's still it's still really changing and uh new roles new volunteers uh, role is still being created uh along the way, so uh. And I think the, the, the main challenge, I think the first main challenge is that, so what is, a, I think the first question that we were being asked is, uh, which is the, is this role important? How important is this volunteer role? I think at that point, uh, when we first came to COVID, we, we couldn't really understand that question. We couldn't really understand, is all, uh, which role is really a more important role than the other? I think, I think, I think, uh, having a common understanding across the team, across different ones. I mean, because most of us will feel that every role is important. If I want to have a plan, I want to have a plan to make sure everything works well. <laughs> yeah. So I think that is the one of the biggest challenge is trying to concretize, trying to uh, create some, some, some key focus on uh, which role is the more crucial one for us to have a plan in place than the not so crucial. I think that's one of the first, first uh, decision that we will make. Uh, and I think uh, a poor decision might be better than no decision at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe the first step is yeah, like just just uh, put some things down, create a, a, a plan for over a few roles. Yeah, then after that, uh, it's also uh, uh, trying to make sense between in between the government's guideline advisory versus what we are seeing in the ground. Yeah, so, so in the ground, I think uh, everybody knows that we have to protect our volunteers, we have to protect our beneficiary. So the broad message, we can all uh, understand, we can all agree to. But what we can't agree to is the specific of five people, in uh, five volunteers, 10 volunteers, two, three. So the, 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 the specifics become something that uh, the different centers, the different colleagues, we have difficulty understanding. Yeah, so, 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 so having some kind of uh, understanding, knowing the intent, knowing the meaning behind the guidelines, I think it works well as compared to just focus on the specific. Because I think, especially for us, we, we come from a very diverse uh, kind of uh, SSA where we have services all across. When we start to talk about specifics, what might work in a student care center is very different from a family service center, and it's also very different from a youth service center. So, so, so I thought that uh, having this, uh, having this understanding of the intent, I think that, that that's, that's one of the key la. Yeah. So, so knowing the intent, having priority, I think yeah, I think that's that's, that's uh, I think the two biggest challenge that uh, we have to grapple with. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Thanks, Singwei. Yeah, I I think I think we really agree with that. I mean. 
starting is better than no, not starting at all. Um, really also agree with how um, there can be uh, so overwhelmingly a lot of different programs or a lot of different volunteer roles that for, when you start thinking, it's like, wow, <laughs> like where, where do we begin, right? And, and um, ultimately, as you said, like, we, we need to start somewhere. So um, we'll actually be handing over. Um, yeah, so, so thanks, Teresa and Xinmin for sharing your experience. 